Hey everybody, what up? Um, so in this video, a lot of people ask me about Devon AI. Uh, I hear about it everywhere, not just you know on YouTube or whatever. Just uh, it seems like around the office and uh, another new tool for AI that's coming out, and basically everybody's like saying it's going to take our jobs, and totally understand that. I mean, where I used to be like, now this, you know, we're going to have jobs for the you know 20, 30, 40 years. I um, mean, you know, I could see that obviously natural language processing has come a long way and, and, you know, guessing the next word of what it is that you're trying to write, whether that be code or trying to do something in a written language is actually very, very effective. Is it general intelligence? Probably not. I still don't think that it is. I don't, I don't know that I've seen any sort of sentient being or anything like that. Uh, so my opinion is that these tools um, have allowed us to become a whole lot more effective at what we do um, as software engineers. And as somebody who's been doing this for a long time, um, you know, I definitely have introduced that into my workflow and it's making me more productive when I do write code. But as I became more senior in my career, I, I realized that there was a whole lot less time that was actually, you know, writing code, especially, writing new features and a lot of things were flagging down bugs and a lot of those stacks where you're flagging down bugs and anomalies and such um, they're not like a single black box or they don't exist in a vacuum they, they don't exist in a way that you could just simply like port them over to some AI engine and have it evaluate you know the state of your entire application now I guess that is where um, we're gonna be at eventually and that's where I think that um you really are going to displace, uh, 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 you know, quite a few jobs when you are able to deploy an AI engine, whether that's Devon AI or, or any of these other AI products that are coming out, and it's able to actually peruse your stack and has open access to pretty much everything. And I suppose you would limit that to read access, but that means it's going to be able to check, like you know, CloudWatch within AWS or any any logging tools that you might have, like Splunk. It's going to be able to call and have access to call all the individual API endpoints that not only your application consists of, but third-party APIs that, that, that it is calling as well. And um, it's going to also have to have access to uh, database. So essentially, it's going to be deployed, I would think, from... It, it can't just be an end-to-end -end service like Cypress, right? Cypress is, is a, a black box testing of, of the way the user would, right? Or executing your application in a browser. For something like this to be truly, truly effective for what a lot of software engineers do, it's going to have to have access to pretty much everything that software engineers have access to. I haven't seen a product for that yet, but that's probably where um, you know we're headed here pretty soon. And then once you have that, it's going to be able to flag a lot of different things. Um, it's going to look at a lot of different like latency and just you know um, SQL query like uh, the time like where where you're bogged down and and some you know large SQL query or something like that. It's going to be able to figure that out. It's going to be able to find correlations much better than a human. Where it's like, hey, during 12:30, there's some you know batch process call or some major update going on and everything slows down at this particular time, calling these particular services. That kind of shit is like a lot of stuff that, that developers have to do and track things down, you know, from when you're dealing with performance or just some random bugs, especially bugs that are related to like time of day. Those are always fun. Uh, race conditions and things like that. They're going to be much better able to be um, diagnosed by an AI engine. Now, if you're going to have the AI engine be able to fix those bugs, you're going to have to have this thing be given, granted right access. Uh, and that could be, include write access to your database. Um, and, and then obviously it's making, you know, back in source code updates and, and such to, uh, to be able to fix the problem. So are you going to be able to rely on an AI engine to be able to do that anytime soon? Um, and my answer would have to be no, like not that we're still far from that. Like you may need less developers, but you're still going to need somebody that, is going to evaluate what this AI engine is trying to do and sign off on it. And anybody that's been coding for a long time knows that writing new code is much easier than actually diagnosing and debugging existing code, especially if it's written by an AI engine. So 
if you've been using these products for a while, especially like ChatGPT, it's very helpful. But a lot of times it'll spit out some very sloppy code uh, that isn't beneficial at all. And then we're finding that those are definitely making their way into the code base. Uh, and most of the time it's like a time constraint thing or it could be junior developers and just, you know, working is better than perfect. And usually code is never perfect. So the point being, though, is that ChatGPT and the like can write some pretty sloppy ass code and code that also just doesn't work. So this Devon AI is uh, what people are talking about. And, um, you know, the first automated AI software engineer, right? Uh, but you could see that if we look at all these different products here, that Devon correctly resolves 13.86% of the issues end to end. So it says far exceeding the previous state of art at 1.96%. So if that is actually true, which, you know, lies, lies and statistics and benchmarks and you know you just never can I, I just don't trust most benchmarks but that's just me but even if this were true um having an ai engine only get you know l less than less than 15 percent of of its code correct is is an absolute travesty and a disaster and like once you unleash this into your code base especially with write access i mean it might take your whole business down um, especially like if you better back stuff up pretty damn well, right? You're going to have jobs that are responsible for monitoring these things, uh, for modifying them, for overseeing them, for backing up your stuff when this stuff destroys your data, uh, or destroys your, your code base. Um, so th that stuff is still going to exist. You're still going to have people that are responsible for dealing with services like an AWS or cloud providers like Azure or whatever. Um, the, the AI tools are definitely going to be able to help when it comes to like, where are you spending your money? But that's sort of already there anyway. Um, but I think it'll be able to take that one step further of being able to diagnose specifically, Hey, you're spending this amount and this is the exact reason why versus Hey, your S3 bucket's costing a bunch of money. It'll be like, no, it's this specific folder bucket. And, and that might probably already exists anyway, but like it's probably a bad example. But there are more difficult examples, maybe with load balancers or databases and things that exist in the cloud where you can get more fine tuned. Anything that's going to be like fine tuned and you have to process a bunch of data like a machine, AI is going to be better. Anything that's going to require thinking outside the box, uh, more gray area of, of thinking, which is pretty much a majority of development, um, creative development, I think is still going to uh, be much more effective with a human, especially a human that utilizes the, the AI tools at their disposal. And um, yeah, all that said, you know, I do think we're, we're eventually headed to an, a, a point in life where like, you know, our jobs will, will completely change. I mean, you're going to have enough of these AI uh, black boxes or the, the AI is going to grow to the point where it does it does have enough read and write access to make all kinds of different changes. And we're going to get to a point where we trust that just as much uh, or more than a human. And then once we get to that point, uh, you're definitely going to have a major, major um, industry like disruption and correction and and, you know, sadly, we do see that in a lot of professions, a lot of jobs do go away. Um, you know, that, that it's time and time again that jobs ch change and, and, and they for sure they, 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 they go away sometimes. And I think when it comes to software engineering, we're still quite a ways away from that, even with all these AI tools. Um, personally speaking, I feel like ChatGPT has actually gotten worse. Um, and... I, de I, you know, I definitely use it. It makes, it, may, it helps me out, but the lack of context is, is, um, is a big problem. I think for making these things go to the next level, but then once you provide all that context, like, do you really want some third party AI tool being able to steal your entire source code, uh, steal your entire data? Like data is like gold. It's digital gold. It's, uh, it's what separates companies from other companies. You know, Google's data is what makes them Google, not because their search engine uh, was written a little bit more creatively in the late 90s. Like, that's how they got started. But 
their data is what makes them Google. If they're not creating and training their own AI models, you know, and only the largest m companies can, um, you're you're basically even if you sign some agreement, like you're you're giving your data and your proprietary hard work and all that to third party companies to basically steal it all if they wanted to. And, you know, people could act like humans wouldn't do something like that. But uh, let's be honest, like that we live in a world of, of just greed and profit. And, um, you know, I think it's definitely concerning that that all these. Most of these products anyway, are all controlled by humongous companies, including like OpenAI, uh, that was supposed to be started to like help us from having these large conglomerates control the direction of AI and, and that clearly that clearly changed pretty quickly, didn't it? And uh, a lot of people don't really talk about that, it seems like. But I don't trust any of these companies to, to store or house any proprietary data uh, without using it to their benefit and advantage and selling it to your competitors. But we'll see where it goes. Um, we'll see where it goes. The last thing I'll say on this is that it seems to me that throughout not just computer science, but humanity, that we've always sort of uh, overblown where we thought we'd be in the future. Like if you would have asked people in like the 70s and 80s, we'd be exploring deep space. It would be like Jetsons. We'd be flying around on flying cars and, and jetpacks and living to 150 and all this. And, and um, you know, it's uh, it's. It seems like a lot of things are overblown throughout the, the course of history. And a lot of people definitely overinflate what they don't understand. And I would say that probably 99.9% .9 of the entire world's population does not understand how this stuff works. Um, and, you know, really what, what useful benefits it's going to provide or how it's really going to change um, humanity. So... I'm definitely on board with the fact that the AI is a big thing. It's one of the biggest things I've seen in my life. It's up there with the internet. It's up there with the smartphone. And uh, it's going to change, I think, the direction of our entire industry. But uh, is it really like Devon AI at 13% at solving things end to end? And including examples that just aren't that helpful, like this video game here. This isn't like Unreal Engine writing C++ or using blueprints or whatever. It, it's it's not dealing with mo modeling in Blender or Autodesk or one of those products and like bringing out, it's not bringing everything in end to end. It's definitely not dealing with source control, packaging, testing it. Now, eventually it can. I mean, it's cool that it did this end to end, but this isn't a feasible thing. This isn't a video game that anybody would play or use. So all I'm saying is that people overblow this stuff all the time if you're learning to code i recommend you check out my website codehawk.com my courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like plural site and udemy one of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that i'm a self-taught engineer myself i never went to school for any of this stuff i've been doing it for over a decade now professionally I've risen through the ranks from junior level developer all the way to director of engineering. And in addition to that, I'm also a YouTuber. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. My website has been around for several years. My company has been around for over a decade. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. There's currently over 40 courses on CodeHawk and I'm releasing more courses all the time. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.